Every year, the Kremlin drafts males between the ages of 18 and 30 for a year of mandatory military service. Last year's draft totaled 130,000. The Telegraph media outlet reported this. It is noted that they represent around a tenth of Russian military manpower alongside various other classes of service personnel from different sources. Until now, the Kremlin has tried to recruit as much as possible from non-Russian ethnic groups, often looking in other countries as far afield as Africa. There has also been much use of convicts and recruiting of volunteer Russians from poor areas. Young ethnic Russians, especially those from central and wealthier areas, have been kept out of combat. Needless to say, Russian conscripts don't get a year of training. Some of the young Russians who've been captured in Kursk reported receiving just days of training and firing only a few rounds before shipping off to the front line, according to the publication. According to the Telegraph, conscripts are at best minor obstacles to the Ukrainian advance. Their sacrifice in battle against tough and well-equipped Ukrainian brigades probably won't save Kursk Oblast from eventual capture. But it might allow Russia's offensive inside Ukraine to continue. The publication says that territory in Kursk Oblast isn't the only thing on the line, however. The loss of hundreds or even thousands of conscripts has touched a raw nerve in Russian society. It was Vladimir Putin's policy before August the 6th that conscripts would only serve in support roles in Russia. They wouldn't fight. Coerced to choose between the lives of unprepared young men and its ambitions for further gains in eastern Ukraine, the Kremlin chose those gains. At present, Ukrainian defense forces are currently conducting operations in Kursk that will impact multiple fronts. Roman Kostenko, secretary of the Vakovna Rada Committee on National Security, Defense and Intelligence of Ukraine, said that defense forces of Ukraine are engaged in operations across several directions. The expected outcomes are to regain the initiative and reduce tensions in Donbass. He also addressed the question of whether Russia might respond to Ukraine's actions in the Kursk region. I don't know what red lines Russia might have left. We have already done everything and they have used almost all their resources against us, excluding nuclear weapons. They have been destroying our civilian infrastructure and harming civilians. We have seized a portion of their territory since 1944. No foreign army has set foot in Russia. We have demonstrated that we will act in defense of our national interests. All they seem capable of now is shelling our civilian areas. I hope our defense systems and F-16s will prevent their missiles from reaching their targets, he said. Kostenko believes that the actions of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region are a positive sign for Western partners. However, he noted that the full consequences are yet to come and will not be immediate. The Russian military command sent part of its units from the direction of the city of Chasev Yar to the Kursk region to stop the advance of the Ukrainian army. The U.S. Institute of War Studies has released information about this. It is noted that Russian military command has redeployed units from the Bakhmut direction to the Kursk region to counter the Ukrainian armed forces operations. The report references a statement by a Russian military blogger, who claimed that the Russian 11th Airborne Brigade, previously active near Bakhmut in late July 2024, struck a Ukrainian armored vehicle in southern Ruskaya Konopelka. The ISW speculates that the Russian military command likely redeployed elements of the 11th Airborne Brigade to replace or reinforce frontline units, rather than using them in ongoing combat operations. The Institute for the Study of War previously noted that such redeployments could impact the pace of Russian offensive operations. However, it may take several weeks to assess any potential effects of these redeployments on Russian operations in the Donetsk region. ISW continues to assess that the Russian military command is likely extremely averse to pulling Russian military units engaged in combat from higher priority sectors in Donetsk Oblast due to concerns about further slowing the tempo of Russian operations in these directions, the report stated. 
ISW has previously observed additional indications that Russian authorities are largely relying on an amalgamation of conscripts, irregular Russian forces, and regular Russian forces redeployed from lower priority frontline areas in Ukraine to counter the Ukrainian incursion into Kursk Oblast, the ISW report stated.